Hello, we are Nazar the West, and today we are teaching you how to play Apiary. This is a game all about Spees sending their wonderful ships out into space to become the best space-faring bees they can be. The aim of the game is to get points by placing workers at a bunch of different locations on the board with varying strengths to get various effects. We, the people they're going to be teaching you, my name is Tom, we have a Lachlan with his hands, Hello. and a Sean with his hands. Bees! Without further ado... Buzz, 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 buzz. In Apiary... Each person takes their own faction tile and hive mat and a docking mat that matches their color. Your faction tile will give you a special starting effect of some kind, a possible special end scoring effect, but most importantly, a certain number of bees that you start with and a certain number of resources that you start with. Uh, this will be indicated by most people's tiles by green circles on your mat. Uh, Sean, Placing his one out didn't actually have any starting resources, but that's fine. He gets some free starting tiles instead. You make sure that your faction tile is placed onto the non-upgrade side onto the hive map. And the hive map is important because this is where you build extra tiles and get extra things going on. You can only build in the spaces that are visible. You cannot build in the cold, dark vacuum of space. And if you do fully fill up that mat, you will get eight additional victory points. There are some additional tiles that you can buy to give you more more space to build, they can go anywhere you like, and if you fill those up, you'll also get eight additional victory points. A lot of spaces on these mats will give you bonuses when you place tiles out onto them, and you can only build adjacent to where you have already built. That includes your starting faction tile. On your turn, you will take one of two actions. You will either place out a bee somewhere onto the board, or you will retrieve all of your bees on the board and thereby get income. There are certain ways that you will not have to take income and not have to retrieve your bees, because in this game, unlike a lot of worker placement games, you aren't locked out from going to a location when somebody else goes there. If Lachlan has taken up a spot on a board, you can go there as well and bump his bee. In places where there are two spaces for a bee, you will get to move them to the second space and sometimes get additional points for that space based on what strength their B is and if there are already two B's on that space your B will get bumped back and when it does you have the choice of either sending it to your landing area in which case you are saving it to retrieve later on or you can send it to the active area and if you send it to the active area your B upgrades by one level B start at level one unless your board says otherwise to start them at level two and go all the way up to level four when you retrieve a level four worker that is when things get a little bit spicy because level four workers are special and there are certain spaces on the board that when you activate them will get you bonuses for using a level four worker and there are some that you can only go to when you use a level four worker. When you either get a level four worker bumped back or you retrieve it by taking it back from the board, you will have to hibernate your level four worker. Lachlan, how does hibernation work? Bees rotate, so there's level one, two, three, and four. And if you have a retrieve your level four worker, he has to go into hibernation. He'll move to the side of the board so that you can recruit him later. But to indicate that he has hibernated and gone from level four to the side of the board, you take a hibernation token, which you have on your uh, active pool or your docking mat, and then you place it onto one of these spaces in the hibernation cone. You cover up a space and you retrieve the benefit that is shown on that space. Uh, and then at the end of the game, whoever has the most bees or hibernation tokens in a certain area gains the victory points associated with it. For example, this one over here, which gets you five victory points at the end of the game. If you have the most tokens in there, you'll get the five points. Uh, whereas this second area is a seven and a two. If it's tied, those are combined and split. Similar with the five and the three, where this three space, each person could have one B on there so they'd all get one point, so it's divided evenly. Retrieving is the second action that you can do, which might bring these level four Bs back. When you retrieve, you will upgrade any Bs that you are taking from the board, but most importantly, you will get income. There are certain tiles that you can build in the game called farms, and farms have a lovely little symbol up the top that will show you what they get when you take income. Each B that you retrieve can go to one farm, so if you are retrieving two Bs, you can activate two two of your farms. Now, the advance is the first of the places that you can go, and advance has three different strengths that you can use, and you count the strength of the B that you have plus the second space on the board. Uh, if there is a second B there, you add the two B strengths together. If there is not a second B, you just add one. So at, at minimum, you are going to have a strength of two, 
which means you get the first area of this board to choose from for these tiles. There are four different kinds of tiles that you can buy and three of them you will get by going to the advanced action. The first of the tiles that you can buy is a farm. These are the green tiles and these will cost you fiber and water, the blue and green resource in this game. Uh, farms will give you spaces to store resources. They will give you victory points that you count at the end of the game and possibly income that you will get during the income step. The second tile, the blue tile, are recruits. This is technology, things that will improve your game, give you a different way to play and give you advantage over everyone else. These will cost you pollen and usually give you some amount of end game victory points as well. And then we have developments. These will cost you wax, which is a non-basic resource. Uh, this will be a little bit harder to get, but these will give you a powerful one-time bonus. In this case, you will discard exploration tokens that you have acquired and trade them in for direct victory points. Anything that tells you to get victory points during the game, you count at that, that time. Anything that has a victory point symbol on it, i.e. these tiles or your board, if you fill it all the way up, you count at the end of the game. The level four power four advance, if you do put a level 4B there uh, is to get three immediate victory points. Next, we have Explore. And Explore is going to reveal new planets and get people resources. We have bees sending people out into space. And when you explore, you move equal to the power of the bees you have placed there orthogonally on this Explore board. If you end up on a space with an Explore token, you will get that token and any resources or bonuses that it gives you. And then you will reveal a planet from the planet deck and the level four power is that if a planet you land on has a level four power, you get to activate it. When you explore a planet, you will get the resources that are on it. And if it has an empty box still on that planet, you'll get to choose a resource to go on that planet. And anyone who explores it in the future will get that resource, in this case, a fiber and a water. Then we have Grow. Grow is how you will acquire new workers and new tiles to place on your board. Uh, you will get to allocate resources in any combination of the strength that you have. So to get a new worker, it costs you a pollen and one strength of your worker or two strength and two of any resource. You can get yourself a new tile to go out onto your board to give you new places to build. Now you aren't spending this strength. You just have to have it there to use uh, at level four. You can also upgrade your faction tile and every faction tile will have an upgraded side, usually giving you some kind of end game bonus or an upgraded bonus of what your faction tile is. Sean, what is your one giving you? My one when I upgrade gives me two victory points per recruit that I have in my ship. Which is great seeing as he starts with two recruits. Below Grow, you have the research icon and the research area is where you will get seed cards. Uh, you draw cards equal to the strength of your B and then discard all but one. So you will keep one card that you have drawn. Now these have three different functions on them. If we flip over the seed cards, on the top right of every seed card, you will see that it can be discarded at any time for one of any resource. It's a free resource, use for it what you will. The top section is a special bonus that this card gives you. It is a one-time powerful bonus. This one is discard any tile from your hive to gain three immediate victory points. And the bottom section is a seed, a plant. You will get to put this under your board. You start with two spaces for that. Uh, and this is the level four function of the research action. You will get to plant one of your seeds and this will give you an extra end game scoring. This one is two victory points per hibernation tile you have placed onto the board. You have a maximum of two seeds that you can plant initially, but for every single extra tile that you buy and put onto your board, you can place an additional seed out. It is worth noting that they are uh, there are specific places to put seeds. It doesn't actually matter if you feel like sticking it into the side for saving table space. You are absolutely allowed to do that. The next basic action that we have is Converge. This is how you can turn resources into other resources. The level four function here is to give a new conversion. It is to teach a dance to everybody at the table. You will get to look at the uh, stack of tiles that are on the board uh, and each game starts with two of these dancers available. Uh, this is the dance of, I will choose because I am choosing in this case, honey and wax. 
And if you spend a honey and a wax in this case, you will get one point and a wax back. And the person who taught this dance will get themselves a queen's favor, which is an additional way of scoring. Uh, when you go here, you perform up to X conversions. So there are four initial conversions and two dancers. And this is the main way that you can acquire honey and wax, the special resources to build the extra important, super wonderful, powerful things in this game. Speaking of special, awesome, super wonderful, powerful things, the final thing that you can do in this game is carve. These are the yellow tiles that go onto your board and these are all end game scoring. A lot of them have requirements that you must meet or they are giving you points for meeting certain things in this case. This will cost you two honey, it goes onto your board and it is three points per remaining hibernation tile you have. So three points for each hibernation tile you did not place onto the board. Those are the actions that you can take. There is one final thing that we need to go through, which is the Queen's Favor track. This is a resource. This is a way to score points. It is at the very bottom of the board. As the game progresses, you will move up this board by gaining Queen's Favor, mostly, or in some cases not, depending on what you have on your board, uh, by discarding resources, because you only have a certain amount of space to store resources. As your turn progresses, you will gain resources. They don't have to go on your mat at this point, but, at the end of your turn, you have to place all your resources onto your mat and you can chop and change and move as much as you want. Any leftover resources that you haven't placed on your board get discarded, but each one you discard gets you a queen's favor up that track. The game will continue until all 12 spaces on the hibernation track are filled. So on average, when everybody has taken three or four level four actions. At that point, everybody at the table gets one final round. So the person who triggers the end game gets the final turn and you start to tally up all the points. If you're more of a visual learner, we're now gonna play through this game in its entirety. That's what we do here. We do a playthrough, a review, and this how to play video. We have been Nose of the West. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Tom, we have a Sean. Hey. We have a Lachlan. Howdy. They did a really good job with their hands and we will catch you next time.